One of the best ways to get and stay motivated with your fitness routine is finding joy in making small but consistent progress. Even if you feel that you're not a fan of working out, which I believe that nobody is initially anyway, keep in mind that we don't merely crave things because they feel good, but we also come to find pleasure in things that we invest effort into and improve that over time. This is what usually leads to sustainable habits because it's how we're wired as human beings. Our brains love completing tasks that move us forward in one way or another because it's how you leverage the dopamine reward system of your brain. Also known as the molecule of motivation, dopamine can motivate you to do things such as exercise by rewarding you with a sense of anticipation and enjoyment when you're moving towards a goal. So again, even though for most people working out doesn't feel great straight away from the very beginning, the more sessions you complete successfully, the more you'll start to feel this sense of accomplishment. Add tracking your completed sessions and your performance to this process, and now you can start amplifying your enjoyment of them even more. Tracking is important because, first of all, it provides a record and visual proof of all your hard work. Therefore, instead of feeling overwhelmed by how far you might be from your goal, you point your attention at how far you've already come. For example, instead of feeling discouraged that you might have to lose another 20 pounds, you focus on how you've already lost four. There's even a whole book on this topic called The Gap and the Gain, which I highly recommend. The book talks all about how focusing on what you haven't achieved leads to more frustration and dissatisfaction. And next, it shows you how measuring your progress by looking at how far you've come is a better way to be happier and more motivated in life. By the way, these are things that we cover in detail in our newsletter and we even give you the right tools to uh, do them and you know, keep track of stuff such as your nutrition. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, make sure you do so. It's free and you can find the link below. Something we see all the time and we try to prevent in our coaching are people and especially busy dads who get overexcited when they first get started with their fitness goals. Although it can temporarily yield faster and maybe even bigger results, going way too hard, way too soon never lasts. The reason is that even though you might not be aware of it, you're being too greedy with your dopamine system. You're getting addicted to the fast results that stand out easily and therefore tracking little stuff feels insignificant. Plus, you're probably neglecting your recovery at the same time, which is also not a good idea. Inevitably, a day comes when you end up depleted, either that's motivation-wise or energy-wise, or often even both. This will typically manifest in a couple of ways, the most common ones being a stubborn plateau, such as a weight loss or a strength plateau, um, oftentimes an injury, or even just waking up with a complete lack of interest to pursue your goals. It can also be triggered the moment you either miss a workout because life gets in the way or because you messed up one meal, you know, maybe you ate some carbs or whatever food category you demonized and swore you never have again. Whatever the case, the result is that the moment your momentum takes a little hit, your mind kicks the situation out of proportion and your motivation plots. You feel as if you hit a brick wall going 100 miles an hour, your black or white mindset kicks in and you get in this all is lost mental state. Now, all this is normal. It doesn't mean that you're not a disciplined person. It just means that you've completely depleted your body and your dopamine systems, which are now in desperate need of a break. Now, sure, even a more balanced approach will have these ups and downs, but in that case, they are, first of all, a lot more manageable. And especially if you have a supportive group of like-minded people around you who understand this process, it's going to be a lot more easier to overcome. And that is why one of the things I like to say to my trainees on repeat is that the long road is the shortcut. It's why slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And it's also why the tortoise beats the hare in Aesop's famous fable. In the end, it's easy to overtrain and be unreasonably strict with your diet for a few weeks or maybe even a month or two. Most people can do that, but 
it's not a way to create sustainable habits that will keep you healthy, energized, and strong and lean for as long as possible. That is something that takes smart work and strategy and not just excitement. So last summer, I felt like I kind of lost my eye of the tiger when it came to training. I also lost a lot of weight and muscle because I was under eating during a very high stress and high workload period. So I decided to get more serious this year. And because I always see my best progress when I keep track of my training, that was the first step that created all the momentum that followed. The last nine months, I've improved my cardiovascular health and conditioning. I've gained both strength and muscle. And finally, although I've gained some extra fat with that extra muscle as expected, I also managed to lean down just in time for the summer, ending up 15 pounds heavier than last year and equally lean. Again, all things I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have accomplished if I wasn't tracking my nutrition, my training and my performance. So here's how I do it when it comes to training. For starters, when I'm working out, I like to avoid my phone and I'm also not a big fan of training apps since they tend to complicate things. You know, either that's because you might need Wi-Fi when you have none or you forget your loggings or the app needs updating or you get stuck for whatever technical reason comes up. On the other hand, a classic big pen and paper never fails you. Going analog reduces distractions, it keeps you more focused and there's something about handwriting your workout down that just adds a more personal touch to the process. This is why I always make sure to have a notebook with me when I train. Usually it's a pocket-sized one. And again, I also like to stick to my favorite classic big pen since it's by far the most reliable pen out there. I might even have a problem with big pens. I'm not sure. I always need to have a box of about 50 of them. I think I can even see them there in the background. Other than that, I like to keep it simple, you know, starting with the date at the top of my page and using short acronyms for the exercises I use. You know, that way I keep the noting process easy, but uh, I also camouflage my secret training regime from my spies. Jokes aside, the most important thing or I don't know, at least for me, the most important thing is making sure to note down each set as fast as possible. Since if I leave it for later on, I tend to be very forgetful. So whatever the case, you know, try to do this as fast as possible. In the end, I find that trying to outbest yourself adds a healthy dose of ego to your training and keeps you from being too soft on yourself. It also makes the whole process addictive since every time you complete a session and you note down an extra rep, compared to the previous time, your brain gets a small dopamine hit. This keeps you focused and eager to keep striving to get a tiny bit better uh, every week or at least every month. And therefore, pushing forward becomes a lot more fun and a lot more effortless. This balanced reward system is a key part for building habits and getting at the same time sustainable results, which is how we try to help people in our coaching. If you're wondering what about intuitive training, you know, kind of going back and forth with this in the past. And although I think that it can have its place with experienced trainees and for maybe, you know, short periods of time, like let's say, for example, when you are on holidays, the reality is that if you're not tracking during the rest of the year, it's quite easy to go soft on yourself and slowly let go. That was all for today. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them below and I'll next time. Keep on training.